All right, it's July, July 30th, almost August, uh, and this is the Simplify Groups and Projects Working Group. Um, we, can, we can jump right in. Um, I'm interested in chatting about what Alex was sharing on Slack so, uh, this week. So Alex, if you want to voice over what you dropped in the agenda, we can start there. Sure. Okay. I'll try my best. I admit I'm, I'm a little bit tired tonight, <laughs> um, right. but I will try. Um, just, just jump in if it gets confusing at any point. Um, sure. So yeah, the, um, the, there's sort of a best I can tell there's some sort of proposal for an on-call schedule. Um, I think the idea is that, um, uh, yeah, in, in the same way that we have sort of a, an on-call schedule, um, I think the idea would be to sort of automate parts of that um, so that we can, you know, ping easily people who are currently on the schedule uh, at the time of a, an alert. Um, uh, there was an interesting discussion on that epic where it, it basically sounded like every other discussion we had in the first few weeks of our meetings where um, they were trying to fit in, you know, trying to work out at what level the, the schedule entity should uh, sort of exist. Um, and should I, I'll, I'll just share, hang on. Uh, so yeah, they, they arrived at this all too familiar sort of picture here with <laughs> the on-call schedule in a subgroup, which is kind of the only way to organize something like this when you have this sort of a perspective um, on the system where, you know, does this call schedule exist on the instance or a group or a subgroup or a project? And, you know, naturally it exists on some sort of subgroup. Um, <laughs> because that's kind of the only place it really could exist in this sort of a, a, an example. Um, and, and then you end up in this sort of situation where, um, sure, the, the engineering managers take care of this on-call schedule, but then there's a whole bunch of members that exist within this subgroup, and then, you know, all other subgroups underneath. Um, but the, the sort of, inevitable conclusion is that everybody has to exist within this subgroup or underneath the subgroup. Um, and then you get all this sort of this mess where you kind of mix up membership and ownership, um, which is kind of the same sort of problem we've had everywhere. Um, so, so for me, it was really interesting to watch this sort of unfold in real time. Um, and the, the question posed in the issue was sort of, well, I, what level does the on-call schedule exist, you know, instance, group, or project. Um, but I think the, the, I think that our, our sort of, the fact that we have this hierarchy sort of frames the whole problem in that context, but I think that's sort of the wrong way to look at this sort of a problem. Um, and I've been wrestling with this idea, and I think, I think I know that me and Liam have had discussions around this, around this sort of tight coupling around membership and ownership and, you know, access. Um, and, and I think I might've cracked at least part of this issue of, of that sort of uh, problem where, um, in, in this example here, the, the, the problem is that the on-call schedule, um, by slotting it into a subgroup or, or group kind of architecture, you make the assumption that the the owners and the members of this subgroup are the same group of people that relate to this call schedule, but um, you know they're two different groups of people. So the people who look after the on-call schedule are going to be a different group of people to the people who are on the on-call schedule, and it's not necessarily going to be a hierarchical arrangement. So. Um, you know, maybe I didn't look this up ahead of time. I wish I did. Um, maybe you can tell me. Um, 
but I assume at, at GitLab there's sort of part of the I don't know the security team or something that looks after the um, our on-call schedule and they allocate sort of positions for people so they they for example are sort of a, a subgroup of our, our main sort of hierarchy there may be this little group over here that will own the call schedule and have sort of management rights to this thing but then they'll want to refer to all sorts of people within the hierarchy um, so when i sort of generalized that kind of problem uh, i came down to three different associations or three different relationships that i think apply to every entity in our system um, and, and you can kind of ask these questions of every entity in our system and sort of um, I think it, it starts to expose where we start to fall short. So first of all, if, if we take the on-call schedule as an example, um, ownership, who owns the on-call schedule, who, who's going to be participating within this on-call schedule, and then what other things is this on-call schedule associated with to, to make the on-call schedule actually function? Um, so ownership of the on-call schedule, you know, maybe it is the engineering managers as, as shown in that example, or maybe it's some sort of subgroup that's sort of part of the deployment DevOps team that, that sort of control all that stuff. Um, membership, well, that's going to be, I don't know, the engineers. Maybe there's like a, maybe there's multiple schedules. Maybe there's a, a schedule for um, front-end engineers, for back-end engineers, for infrastructure, for, I don't know, all sorts of stuff. Um, and associations, uh, I think in the on-call schedule, nothing else would be associated, but, but I've put the example in here that if we're talking about an Epic, then, um, issues are associated with an Epic, um, you know, an Epic without issues, just, it's kind of pointless. It, it's nothing. So, um, when, when you sort of process all of this together, I, I think what's going on is that a lot of people, when, when they put something like an on-call schedule into the hierarchy, they end up saying that, well, the owners and the members are the same thing and they need to exist within this sort of hierarchy. And you just kind of take the highest level, either membership or ownership group, and then everybody else falls underneath that. Um, but really, I think they're two different things. And I'm not quite sure why it happens in our system that they're just not considered two separate things but um i i think that in an on-call schedule you, you might create it in a subgroup and then there's some sort of like drop down or, or i don't know something that where you can sort of say these groups are part of this on-call schedule we own the on-call schedule but there's a whole bunch of other groups that sort of connect to it um it's not necessarily everybody under us um So yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know how much sense that made, but <laughs> um, I'll try to put it into something more sort of sort of digestible over the next few weeks. It made sense at least roughly to me when I was reading about the the issue, and then I made some wireframes uh, around that. Um, okay. but I think they're kind of rough. I don't want to show them just yet. Um, but uh, yeah, just adding. To that. The, the the key idea is that that I think there's been this problem where people have continuously mixed up ownership and access or ownership and membership to something. And essentially by, by sort of putting them in the hierarchy, they've tried to solve both problems by putting them in some position in the hierarchy. And it's, I just don't think it's possible. So I was going to ask, um outside of like the mvc we're pushing for um is there some smaller change we could make like what you mentioned right at the end alex um of like maybe when you're creating something like this there's a a drop down or a small bit of ui that lets you choose the association like is there something smaller we should consider here to like encourage the right teams to ask the right question and set up things in the right way so there's less for us to unfurl down the road, say if we can solve this, the bigger problem. 
Yeah. So in, in our Slack conversation, I mentioned that I, I think there's like some guidelines that I think will come out of this working group. And I, I don't know how useful that's going to be, but um, over the next few weeks, I would like to go through some example entities and, and sort of approach it from this perspective of these questions, you know, well, mm. who owns these and who are the actual members or the participants of this thing? And um how have we approached it with that entity now and how should we really approach that the, the problem with these questions in mind and i think we'll start to sort of uncover um, patterns um, and i think that might lead to sort of what, what you're suggesting sort of actionable items and things that sort of more more concrete sort of advice or, or direction as opposed to just sort of generic sort of uh, theories cool yeah that makes sense thank you but yeah i think i think we've mentioned teams and we've sort of we've started hitting on teams i think that sort of speaks to the, the part of the the key of that idea that that you have a team that owns some schedule and then some team that is the the members of the schedule that, that are the sort of the resource pool of people that could be called um, and they're two totally different things and we could do that with our current infrastructure i'm quite sure but it's just the way that everything's sort of framed that nobody you know, at least it it doesn't seem to get picked up in that way So I, I think um, with, with the teams, um, I don't know if it's been identified, but I think a key part of the teams for me at least is that you can start assembling teams. You can compose a team out of other teams. Yep. Um, so, you know, the, the, the people that are on call, it could be, um, you know, manage access backend people and then like create source backend people and you put them into a team and these are, and then you just have this like group of people and then these people you sort of go, well, they're, they're part of that schedule as people we can call, but then you've got engineering managers here and they, they own the schedule and maybe it's in their group or something. I don't know, but totally different things. Um, but they, yeah, it seems to be getting mixed up. Why, why do you think those, I don't know, I want to call them limitations, but why do you think that way of thinking exists? Do you think it's just because we use a product we're so ingrained in thinking about the hierarchy? That's my suspicion. Yeah, I think we've got, I think shared groups are fairly new as well. So maybe um, all we've had is this hierarchy. And so that's the only way that the problem's been thought about. Uh, maybe it was the only way it could be solved previously. Um, yeah, at least since I've started, you know, jump onto access um, sort of six months ago or so, um, this stuff's only just started to get introduced. Um, so I think the, there's sort of, we're building like the, the sort of the bottom up components that could sort of solve these problems. Yeah, it's a very common pattern, right? So I think from like the product team perspective, like PMs have seen it done a certain way. And when they know they have a problem to solve and that's the only way it's been solved at GitLab in the past, say Epix being an example, then they just naturally will gravitate towards that solution because it's the, in their mind, the quickest way they can deliver something to a customer, right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's funny how there's, it, that you've kind of got this um, like illusion that you have this choice in making this decision. Is it an instance or a group or a project thing? But really, I mean, there's, there's really only one answer today. Um, everybody seems to, like you say, pick the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, Daniel, you want to voice over your... 
Oh, just saving for the the end of the. I don't know if it was um, the best time for Alex since it was. I don't know what time it is there for him. But oh, sorry. I thought I'm, that I'm all good. the would a member group team worker. Oh, know. I thought we kind of discussed that already. Yes, like, yeah, yeah. The only thing I added is when we have some guidelines um, on this, which I, I think it's a great idea, we should we should probably commit some time to socializing it. Because I feel like it's just like reading that that issue you shared, Alex, and uh, I mean you jumped in there, um, but there's such a well worn path it's hard to, you know, convince that group to to think differently um, or take a different approach. So it's probably worth our time to, you know, maybe hold an AMA or or make sure we have a handbook update and some other things to help um, socialize that a bit more. Yeah, I think that's something that I'm not seeing enough of is a, the sort of workaround or temporary solution exists in terms of like creating new groups and adding members, specifically what you're trying to do for that. And then there's only half of that group is be a member group, which more or less is a team. Um, but that's not really vocalized, at least in terms of whenever people I've spoken with find that they're having the problem this is what the the essays and the tams are saying do this method and it will kind of work around some of their problems they have in regards to their um their architecture for their uh, permissions and their organization yeah it's a that's a great point daniel like um if we were to make some of these small changes and guidelines then you could recreate a lot of content that i've seen that that we share with customers on best practices, um, which would I think help a lot, a lot of customers get out of a pickle that they're currently in, which is needing something to function differently, but because they've structured themselves the way GitLab, the company has structured itself inside of the product, uh, they struggle. So yeah, that's a great point too. Well, thank you again, Alex, for pulling that together and sharing that. Um, if you haven't read the issue, it's worth it's worth kind of reading it from beginning to end. I mean, Alex did a great job outlining it, but it gives you some empathy for the uh, the questions and problems teams are solving. Um, yeah, Dan, you want to go the the voiceover the last one? Yeah, I just didn't know what time would be better for Alex. I don't know if it's really late for you right now or whatnot. I just kind of like wanted to check in. No, I'm, I'm all good, Daniel. Go for it. Okay, because okay, right now it's only 4 p.m. for me, but like if it's super late for you, that would be kind of mean. <laughs> no, 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 please go for it. I'm all good. Yeah, it's we're all spread out quite a bit. Um, so when I looked at the calendar, and I'm happy to change it if there's a better time. Um, I think it's uh, editable too, so you can change it yourself. I don't mind. Um, but yeah, there just isn't. This was like the best window where we were all relatively like not asleep. <laughs> this is where we luck out like, being based in Europe. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know what the, the best window was, so... Unfortunately, this one, which is it's 6.30 a.m. for Mike and I, uh, and then I don't know what time it is for Alex, but. Uh, it's nearly 10 p.m. for me, but it's good because the kids are asleep, so it's, it's quiet. Okay. Well, I'm happy to be flexible for whatever works better for everyone. Um, well, Mike is is typing, and I'll let him voice it over. I merged the uh, update to our exit criteria that we discussed last week, just as an update. Um, so that's been merged in, and I tagged a new in it just to give him uh, eyes on it in case he had feedback. But um, we'll work from that. So thank you for the comments and improvement to it. Mike, we're going to have a score. 
for subgroups soon? <clears throat> yeah, I think it's currently um, at complete. Um, and I'm just based on what I'm hearing here and what Alex presented, I'm like, this is gonna be a really interesting um, validation process because the, the like 10,000 foot level gist of what we do is create jobs to be done for a capability. So like a person trying to accomplish a goal and we um, write scenarios that are then given to um, participants who are typically outside of GitLab and typically new to GitLab and watch them try to perform those uh, scenarios and accomplish those goals in the product. Um, I, I hope that as we do that, like that'll be learning for this group. Um, I also don't think this group should slow down by any means and wait for data. I think, I mean, we already know that it's a confusing experience. So, but I asked uh, Jeremy Watson, you know, he said, I want to do some category maturity uh, validation for the manage stage. And I asked him to like prioritize subgroup. Is it subgroups you want to validate? Is it uh, audit events or insights? And he said subgroups. So I think it's kind of good timing all around. That's great. Do you know, Mike, about how long it might take to get um, early the results? First, yeah, I, I supported the initiative to um, to do this validation with issue tracking and merge requests. Um, and it took about a month, okay. all told. Probably, probably more than a month because the scenario writing uh, took a while. But there are also like too many scenarios. So I think if we cap the subgroup validation at like maybe five scenarios, um, we can get it done a lot sooner, get insights a lot sooner. Yeah. So issue tracking was also the first one we did, right? So issue track we did two at the same time for the first time. We did merge request and issue tracking. So yeah. we worked out some kinks there. So yeah. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully, it, we definitely gave feedback to uh, the DRIs for that process. Cool. Yeah, I think um, we don't. You're right, Mike. We don't need to like wait on data to move forward here, but I, this will be a great data point to move forward with um, when we present to like project engineering leadership. So if we set our goal as uh, like October to do that. Um, so if we can have data by then, then that'll be a great uh, input to, to some of that presentation and finalizing the uh, solution validation section of the canvas. So. Yeah. And while I have you all here, um, who, who would like to contribute to the the job statement authoring and scenario devising that we give to participants. I mean, I could blast a Google Doc to everybody, but would somebody like to be a partner in writing those up? Preferably somebody with like knowledge of the domain, like what subgroups are for and how people use it. And then also an understanding of how subgroups currently work would be good. Are you looking for one person there, Mike, or? I was hoping everybody would raise their hand. <laughs> I'm not happy to be involved. It feels like product like should take more like ownership on this, I guess, in terms of like interaction with users and how they, uh, how they use the product. I was going to raise yeah. Melissa and, and Gabe's hands, but they're not here. So I can't well, they're not here. So let's raise their hands. Yeah. For them. Um, okay. But yeah, they seem like the two from a product perspective, they seem like the two best uh, folks to inform that. I think um, another lens I'd like is, are we giving people a Kobayashi Maru? Are we giving, giving people an impossible scenario? Because, um, you know, it takes time to run them through this. It'd be kind of wild if no one could actually accomplish it, given how the scenarios are written or what we're asking them to do in terms of a, a goal to accomplish with the current product. Yeah. Do we have a job speed in statement for related? Not for, not for subgroups. So that's part of this is to form that. Yeah, and I think that's going to be the the long pole of the tent is getting some scenarios that are written in plain English. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm, I'm hoping everyone can give input and feedback into it. Yeah, I'm happy to contribute as well, but I think PM should be the primary. Cool. Well, we're about at time. Um, 
So thank you all. Thanks, Alex. Um, it sounds like next week we might be able to, I don't want to put Daniel on the spot, but be able to check out some potential wireframes and some musings from the UX side. Yeah, I have, I think they're ready to go. I just wanted to have a sanity check first. No, that's great. Yeah, we'll, we'll look forward to it to, to next week then. Alrighty, have a great evening or day, depending on where you're at. Take care.